Hi, Christina Peek is here. I was fortunate to test the size expansion of the Green Style Creations Sundance Jacket, and I made three. This was actually my first tester, and I learned a lot from making them, and I thought I would share my top 10 tips for sewing up the Green Style Creations Sundance Jacket. First, let's look at the pattern a little bit. It is semi-fitted. It has princess seams on the front and a yoke detailing on the front and also on the back. There's an optional pleated back section, which I thought I was going to use for all of mine, but I didn't actually try it yet. You can hem the sleeves or you can add thumb cuffs. And in addition to, okay, so when it's also got the, the zipper, I should mention a full length zipper, you can have a hood or the stand up collar, two kinds of pockets, which are optional. The uh, rounded pocket is one, and then I'll go into detail on the pocket I chose. Tip number 10, use the square pockets. The round pockets, too small, your phone won't fit in them, they'll just annoy you. If you're going to go through the effort of putting in the pockets and they have a nice little zipper, um, they're really elegant and they're nice, use the square ones. Also, I recommend you lengthen them a little bit. They are perfectly sized such that the bottom will be caught in the facing for the hem, but why risk it? Just a little extra length and then you don't have to pay as much attention to make sure that they're caught. Here's the pattern piece. Remember, any grading that you do on the, the panel, you also need to do on the pocket. No big deal. I added quite a bit, which was probably a little too much, but it was easy to catch it in the seam. As you can see here. So the top is, is you can drop things in inside in order to you know, use it as a big cell phone pocket on the inside, as well as the zipper pocket that it's intended to be. Tip number nine, add a mark at the top of the sleeve to match to the shoulder seam when you are inserting these sleeves. You insert the sleeves in the round, which is really the more traditional way of doing it, but you need to do that because you've already sewn up the pocket seam. Uh, and to sew up the pocket seam, you need to do the side seam. Be sure to add all the necessary markings and notches after when you're cutting out. I like to use Crayola washable marker. You can also use things like chalk, but chalk can rub off really easy. And I find out that I find that Crayola washable marker is great for this. Here's the top of the sleeve. As you see, it only has one, it has no mark for the back. It has one mark for the front and no mark for the top. Find the halfway point between the two sides and mark that as the peak. Go ahead and put a double notch on the back to about the same spot you would put the single notch on the front to show which is the back and which is the front. You'll thank yourself. Tip number eight, when you're sewing the pocket to the zipper, be sure to only sew between the marks. It says this very clearly in the instructions, but of course I didn't do it the first time. But you do this so that you can sew around the pocket bag later to close it up. Also consider adding fold over elastic to the top of the pocket. That helps make it a neater inside pocket. 
Here's my final version, and you can see I have the fold over elastic. When I went back and redid my tester, I actually had a little tension on the top here just to make sure that it stays flush. This pocket bag is made out of a power mesh, and the other is just an athletic wicking jersey mesh. Also very stretchy um, and very nice to work with. Tip number seven, zigzag or bind the back side of the pocket. And I'm gonna flip back and show you what I mean. Zigzag, this isn't done on this one. I did re realize this after my third one that this is really, uh, looks a lot better if it's neatened up a little bit. You can just zigzag over this seam right here on the left um, and it neatens it up. Tip number six, go ahead and get a 30 inch molded plastic zipper. If you had an older version of the pattern, it might have said 24 inches or some other length. It depends on the size. Uh, and you definitely want one that matches the size of your garment so that it goes all the way from the collar to the hemline. And it's just the perfect length. I recommend I did a nylon coil zipper for two of mine and a molded plastic zipper for the third. I really think the molded plastic zipper is nicer to shorten and to finish. I will link to a method that Alex Radu shows um, for another pattern company, um, but it works really well. It involves a little bit of flames, but it's okay. Measure several times to make sure you have the right length. Measure both sides. Also, instead of folding the tape back, cut and seal it, once again with flames, with a little bit of, a little bit of fire, and that makes it much neater under the zipper guard. This jacket has a zipper guard so that the top doesn't scratch your chin. Tip number five, interfacing the area where the zipper will be placed is not actually optional. It is listed as optional in the pattern, but it really does make a lot of difference and it doesn't take much time or effort and it definitely pays back. I have some of the Wawak Trico fusible that comes on a roll and you can get it in black or white one inch or two inch. If you have a thick or wider than two inch, you really just need one inch by the length, you know, of where your zipper is going to go. And the nice thing about the Trico fusible is that you can press it on at temperatures that are safe for these athletic fabrics. And it, it's soft, um, but it adds enough firmness to do the job. Tip number four, for repairing the inside edge of the collar, you sew the collar right side together with the bodice. And then you take the other end of the collar, you fold it into the inside of the jacket and you stitch it down from the outside. That's how it's done, pretty common way. So, especially when you're using these athletic fabrics that don't press nicely. I mean, it's certainly not going to press like cotton or like linen or something like that. It's, it's going to stay bouncy. You may or may not even get a press at all in it. Sew a guide stitch at the 3 8 using a long straight stitch. This can be removed later, but it gives you an even distance that you'll fold. Then Fold that over at that and hand baste it. Just a really long running stitch with a contrasting thread, maybe something left over from something else along the whole length. Easy to remove later and you will thank yourself. Tip number three. Don't stop top stitch the zipper until after you're done with the collar. This may not be what it says. Certainly after you put the zipper in and you look at it, you're like, that is a work of art. 
Isn't it beautiful? Boy, that interfacing was such a good idea. And you want to top stitch it right away. Wait a minute to do that. Refer to the sew along pictures that are available on the Green Style blog or on YouTube that Cynthia's done. And notice that you first turn the collar toward the right side of the jacket, sew it at the zipper, and then pop that out and toward the inside. Sounds really complicated. It's actually extremely easy. Once you do it once, you'll be like, okay, that makes a whole lot of sense. And it's a nice clean finish. If you've top stitched, it makes that a little bit harder. Just consider it. Tip number two. Pin the collar in place from the inside, then hand baste it, and then stitch in the ditch from the outside. Now, why would you hand baste it instead of leaving the pins in? Well, actually, one of the instructions might be you put the pins in from the inside, go to the outside, put in another set of pins, then take the inside pins out and, you know, sew along that way and taking the pins out as you go. The problem is you've got, no matter how long your pins are, you've got, you know, a lot of thicknesses there, especially if you've surged. And the pin can kind of deform the fabric in that particular area. Also, you're going to get your hands poked. And it takes just as long to put in like two sets of pin as to do a little hand baste. And then you can just pull it right out uh, when you're done. And tip number one, my final tip, the hem. Consider understitching the facing. The instructions don't say to do that, but I like to do it just to make sure that the inside part doesn't roll to the outside. With that said, if you do and your presser foot pressure is too high or you pull or stretch, then it could cause it to flip out a little bit. Um, you'll see in some of mine, it looks like it does. That could be the reason. You can choose not to, of course, um, but it, it's, a, it's a consideration. If you do um, understitch, you can do it with a cover stitch if you have one, and then use the differential to kind of like tighten it and pull it in. It's an idea. Either way, pin the crap out of it and go slowly when you're doing the hem. You might be thinking, oh, I'm almost done. I've done all these seams and, you know, just go right ahead. But pin it every little bit so you don't get any roping and um, just take out the pins as you stitch. You'll be glad you did. Here I'll show you. This was my first tester. So you can see the shape on the back is different. I took it all apart and I put it back together again and um, used a lot of what I learned making the second and third one to improve this. I cut new pockets and because I originally had the round pockets, cut new pockets and made some of the changes I'd learned from the others for that. And then this is my final. It's kind of a, um, feels like scoob on the outside. It's like fuzzy on the inside. It fits beautifully. I love it. It's a coil zipper. I have um, the nice big pockets that go all the way to the princess seam. The zipper guard, full length zipper. And I'm trying to show you the inside pocket here, which you can't really see, but you've seen it previously in the video. So thank you for watching my video. Those are my 10 tips that will help you have a fun and enjoyable sewing experience as well as a good result. I encourage you to try it. There's a lot of pieces, but it's easy to sew and it's very comfortable and it's, I think you'll really like it. There, check out the links in the description for the resources I suggested, and I'll also I also have a roundup on my blog, which will also be linked in the description.
peace, no. Don't let the fear steal your peace. Don't let the fear steal your peace, no. Don't let the fear steal our peace.